thank you so much for pulling this together. And uh, my job in the next five minutes is just to set, set the stage about uh, dose response. Uh, and it is a dilemma. It's an important one uh, to solve uh, because it's fundamental for our ability to use these tools uh, in meaningful ways for research and for clinical care. Next slide. And you can go ahead and uh, hit the, yeah, three, and yes, two more times. So I'm uh, back. Uh, so dose response relationships in the ideal sense, you might think of a, a straight line relationship, increasing dose, increasing response. But we know that in biology and physiology, dose response relationships can be nonlinear. Uh, they may be curvilinear. They may have a, a therapeutic index where if you go too high, you paradoxically uh, dampen down your response. So uh, key to understanding these relationships is um, really how we define what we put on the X and Y axes. How do we measure the dose and how do we measure the response? Uh, we have to start there to really understand the relationship between these two factors. Um, next slide. And it's not trivial uh, in understanding how we focus, first of all, on dose that's delivered to the head, whether it's electrical stimulation or uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation or other forms of energy like acoustic stimulation. Uh, the delivered dose is characterized by the parameters that we dial onto the box. Uh, so it might be frequency, pulse, width, train duration, the shape and placement of the electrodes, the uh, coil design and its placement and orientation relative to the head. Uh, and these are the parameters of dose that are typically reported in method sections of papers. Uh, and they're important for rigor and reproducibility, but they're not the complete story. Uh, advance, please. Uh, the other aspect is the received dose in this purple box here, which is subject to an extreme amount of inter-individual variability. Different heads of different shapes uh, result in different uh, electric field induced in the brain by electrical or magnetic stimulation, also have different um, impacts on other forms of uh, stimulation like acoustic stimulation. And so understanding what gets into the head of the individual and having tools to quantify that, uh, and then also tools to understand what impact that those induced fields have on neural activity. The impact of the stimulation may be influenced by the state of the brain's neural activity at the time it's being stimulated. Um, advance, please. So if we focus on these aspects of the re received dose, uh, uh, advance, please. We have tools that you'll uh, be hearing about that allow us to quantify, for example, the electric field uh, using structural MRI to model the electric field, simulate the electric field. There are also new approaches to image the um, electric field by imaging the magnetic um, field generated by the electric field and generated in the brain. Uh, and this can be very useful in demonstrating whether a target can be reached uh, and identifying the degree of non-target stimulation. Uh, advanced, please. There's a fundamental depth focality trade-off. Uh, here you're seeing different TMS coils modeled with the depth on the x-axis and the degree degree of spread on the y-axis. So understanding this is going to be very important. On the neuro, um, uh, neural activity side, uh, there are tools uh, to quantify this as well, such as fMRI, so we can characterize uh, the state of the brain at the time of stimulation. We can do uh, concurrent TMS fMRI to look at the effects of acute stim and also pre-post stimulation to understand the chronic effects, which then is a lead into response. The next slide. There's some complicating factors here. The brain state at the time of stimulation uh, will shift the dose response function. And the brain state is often not controlled or measured. Uh, please advance. Uh, the simple example of that is the motor evoked potential. Uh, please advance, which is influenced by muscle tone at rest versus uh, when there's increased muscle tone, you will increase the motor evoked potential. Next slide. Another complicating factor is that the parameter space has high dimensionality, both in the temporal and spatial domains. Next. So for example, here's e-field modeling uh, of a single individual across modalities. You can see as we shift the location of the electrodes, big uh, change in the electric field induced in the brain. Next slide. But within modality, there's also tremendous variability across individuals. So here's the same delivered dose, uh, multiple different heads receiving uh, multiple different strengths and distributions of electric field. Next slide. Another complicated factor is how we combine behavioral intervention with non-invasive brain stimulation. This requires characterizing and optimizing the dose not only of the brain stimulation, but also of the behavioral intervention, as well of it, as, as its timing relative to the stimulation. Next, we introduce this concept uh, of what we call the dynamic duo, uh, that you can get either positive synergies, net neutral effects, or negative synergies, depending on the timing of how you um, combine brain stimulation with behavioral intervention. Next slide. 
Another complicating factor is development, the age of the subject, and of course that's a moving target. So neurodevelopment and aging will change dose response functions. Here you see a dose response function of non-human primates. Next slide. Uh, and, uh, next in humans, so on the x-axis is age, on the y-axis is the motor threshold. So clearly, um, characterizing how the brain is developing, it's going to change the white matter, myelination, uh, and cortical thickness, and so on. Uh, these are all important to take into account. Last slide uh, is don't forget about sham. Uh, this is one of our early studies in an animal model, non-human primates, where we implanted electrodes to measure the um, voltage induced by the, in the brain by different types of sham that were being used at the time in clinical trials. And you can see the top line is active, but the line right below it is a sham intervention that was being in uh, use at the time that we did this study. So animal models uh, can be very important in understanding dose response functions and understanding the interventions we use. Now I'd like to hand it over to Dr. Opitz um, for the second intro talk. Mm -hmm.